Hey Boris, great to have you here. Um, Benjamin asked me if I can raise some questions, you know, how Fit Me began and the story started. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So um, I'm a guy who enjoys to play computer games and I actually started with this in the 1980s. This is so-called VC20. That was a very high sophisticated machine where the first games we could play with. And actually, fun fact, we had monthly magazines and typed the code for the games out of this magazine. Like this or with 10 to, to play it. I think, uh, I think we did it <laughs> okay, this, like this. this way. <laughs> I um, love that. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, we've been quite young though. And uh, actually, I don't think this is kind of possible today because the magazines would be actually quite big. And um, yeah, in the, 2000, in the year 2016, me or we together, as you know, figured out that there are massive and very uh, big virtual worlds and a lot of people have like in-game items and in-game services which they want to give to each other and sell to each other and buy from each other. And uh, unfortunately, you cannot only play in life. So I had a job. You had a job, I think. Mm, what were you right. doing? Trading as you. Trading? Ah, as me. Ah, ah, yeah, I think we worked together, didn't we? We did, we, yeah. We know quite a long time, we both, don't we? Yes. About 20 years. Yeah. Okay, so working, we had to work a little bit, and that was in the financial markets with stock exchanges. And then, um, yeah, we came to the point that there is actually no proper way of uh, exchanging typing, exchanging these uh, in-game items and services for all the gamers which are out there. How many gamers but, are out there? But, you asked me already. Yes. I think there are two and a half billion gamers. I learned this, you know, from the magazine. Really? And I think more than news, news reports say there are more than 1.1 billion who are paying for the games. As I know, as my children are playing as well. So, um, but Tell us a little bit more about the market. I mean, it's just not just the gamers. I mean, there are other stakeholders on the market who might have interest in, in FitMe. Oh, absolutely. They're the publishers. And the publishers are the ones who actually make the games. We can play. Okay. But really? what is their interest? They have to make money. Okay. But how do they make money with FitMe? Um, with FitMe, or FitMe, or a market or an exchange can help them to actually find the best way and prices and amounts to sell their items because uh, the virtual worlds most often develop into like pay to play schemes or pay to win schemes and uh, these companies need money. Do you know why well, these companies how, need money? But how exactly does it work? I mean, how does a publisher gain money with this? Let's say a publisher has an in-game item and he wants to make money out of it. What? Yeah. Is it better, for example, to sell five for ten dollars or fifty for five dollars? Okay, I got that right. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, does he just earn money with with seeing what the prices are? Are there different ways? Mm, of course, they can actually measure how people are interested in their game. If the people trade the items of the game less, they actually know the traction of the game is getting down. They have to put some content on to get the people more attracted and so on. And they get paid per item and per service? The publishers, yes. If they sell it. Oh, sure. if it's traded over a fit me. Oh yeah, they always get a little bit of commission, sure. Which is? Good. <laughs> I liked it that you think it's good, I think it's good because then okay. they can give good games to the, to the other stakeholders. I mean, we have the publishers on one side, and on the other side we have the gamers. Right. Well, what is in it for the gamers? You know? First of all, uh, it will be much more easy to find the item or service of your desire if you have a marketplace where everything is combined. You don't have to look uh, that much. How do they do that right now? I mean, how do you buy gold or whatever you need in, in your games? Oh, I have to easily search quite a while. Yeah, or know some guys where, some secret guys where I get the hidden stuff. Oh, okay. The hidden stuff. Right. I'm very interested in the <laughs> hidden stuff, but you know, maybe there are uh, children out there, we don't talk about the hidden stuff. Um, you know, don't show it to your children. Um, but let's talk about, I mean, how do the stakeholder interact right now? I mean, what is, what is the current situation and the current problem 
for the two of them? At the moment, there's basically that's just the world of shops. So you want to sell something, you put a price tag on it, and people may pass by or not. And the price is written nine dollars, and you can decide do I buy it for nine dollars or not. And that is the world out there. But can I just go to a shop and sell it, or does a shop sell it? And did you, do you go to the supermarket and try to sell five eggs? Exactly. I should try this. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got that. So there are shops out there where there's a price tag for nine dollars, and. I mean, some guys go to shops if they want to buy something and say, actually, I want to just pay eight. But most of the time, the shop owner says, what? So it's not common in shops that you actually haggle for the price. Okay. Good. And on an exchange, by the way, you can put a binding order in where you can say, actually, I want to pay seven. I wait so long until anybody else is willing to sell this item for me for seven dollars. If you're willing to, to buy it for seven, I can sell it immediately for seven. Immediately. Okay. You don't have to look for a buyer if you have a virtual item which you want to sell. But if I don't want to sell it for you to see for seven, I want to have a better price than I can. You can actually, there's, there was the other guy at the beginning who was selling it for nine dollars, right? You can go in front of him and sell you say for eight fifty, for example. Okay. So it's really maybe interesting for me, maybe I get a little bit closer to you and I say I pay 70 and a half, seven and a half. So it's really working like a stock exchange. Absolutely. So everybody who knows the stock <laughs> exchange in New York knows how it works. Easy so as cake. Easy as pie. Yes. Pie. So that's good. <laughs> you know, we, we worked some, some, some time on FitMe. Um, so what do you see as the next steps in order to, to bring it to life, you know? The most important thing is that we deliver an experience for you guys that you actually like the, what you can do. So it would be very great if you are going to our prototype, check it out, give us feedback and say, say us what you like, what you understand, ask questions so we can actually make it more comfortable for you. www.fitme.net Exactly. Thank you. Um, what is FitMe actually standing for? First International Play Money Exchange. Oh, it's the abbreviation of the name of the company. I understand. It's it sounds like, quite good. Yeah, it's it? like DAX, you know? Deutsche Aktien Index. Right. So, I mean, we've been to, to we attended to Gamescom this year. And I mean, I was quite amazed seeing that many people on on the great event, yeah. On the one event yeah. going crazy for, for, for gaming. Yeah. And, I mean, we had some talks with, with publishers and I was even quite amazed by their reaction. You know, I thought they, they didn't understand the concept or they were even maybe fighting us, you know. But um, what, is, what, is, what was your feeling? I mean, I felt really comfortable um, talking to them and, and, and I think there is a good, good chance to have a broad audience of publishers to co collaborate with. So, what was your feeling? Absolutely. I, I had the same fears like you, sure. And actually, uh, it was quite clear that they uh, understood the benefits of it. Because let's say they have an in-game item, something like a sword, right? And they sell like 100 thoughts a day for $10, and they're happy with it. But maybe, when, when on the on exchange, obviously, even though this is not a market which should go always go up and down because they want to sell it for 10, the people can actually bid for this item on the exchange. They can buy it on the exchange, but they can say, I want to pay $7 so or they, 6 They would see the interest of the game, exactly. right? They would, okay. Exactly. They would see what the other gamers are out there. Maybe maybe the sword is just too expensive. And another guy would buy, for, for the avatars would buy five swords for five because he thinks it's the right value, but he thinks one for nine is not good for me. It's too expensive. So then the people can show their interest and then the publishers can actually see, oh, maybe I think they're very, very smart people actually think about the prices which they put out and roll out. But at the end of the day, the price of the good is always made by the market. The market decides what the price, what the, right. what the value of sure. the anything is. You know this from earlier times. Yes, right? <laughs> I heard about <laughs> that, right? Exactly, yeah. So and then the publisher can actually see that, oh, 
it's actually the wrong price. It's not good to take seven, eight, nine dollars for it. It's say five, and maybe they at the end of the day they can make more revenue because they sell much more quantity for five dollars than for nine dollars, and they liked it a lot. I think they it's can a test it beforehand, and it's a proven concept. I mean, <laughs> as you said, you know, it's in all markets. So um, tell us a little bit about the next steps. You know, what is what is coming for Fitney? I mean, what what can we expect on the coming? four to five months. Right, as, as the prototype is like robust working at the moment that you can actually trade with each other, we need to implement a payment system, for example. We need to actually make the APIs ready that all the other stakeholders in this market actually can add on. Of course, of course, actually, it's like we don't do not want to interfere with any game with any publisher. They go to our API and actually can interact with us. Right. We do not enter their systems, which we don't want to. We just want basically uh, give a service to anybody who is out there and enhance their possibilities. And I mean, this is on the on the technical side, and what you see as our mission as well. I mean, in the coming months. We started marketing a little bit on a basic level, but you think we, we should increase the awareness of the brand, but also of what we try to do, that we want to develop the community, or you think this is still too early? Uh, no, I think it's just the right time now. You could think about making a video out of that. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, we are just trying to do this now. So is it now time to say goodbye? I think it's time to say Not really, not really, not really. www.fitme.net See you soon. <laughs>